Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Who is Jesus? That question is as applicable and significant today as it was 2,000 years ago when Jesus first asked it of his disciples. Who is Jesus? Now, I trust that all or most of you would give me the same or very similar answers, perhaps even using the concise confession of faith of Peter from our reading that we just heard, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. But you probably know that not everyone in the world today sees it that way. And in Jesus' day, people also have uh, some different answers to that question than, than even most people today would give. Many of the people who lived at Jesus' time and, and in the area that he lived and ministered had seen some of his miracles or had heard about them, had heard him teach, which was very different than any of their teachers of the law. It was powerful, just like John the Baptist was, or like one of those legendary prophets of old, like the prophet Elijah or the prophet Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets who stood up and boldly proclaimed God's truth even in the face of the fiercest and most ungodly human opposition, and even sometimes in the face of torture and death. Today, outside of Christian circles, and sadly, even increasingly more inside of Christian circles, people would give different answers to that question of, who is Jesus? Some would say that he is a wise teacher. Or others would say that he is a kindly humanitarian, an agent of social change, a model of morality for this world, so that if we would all just stop and think about what would Jesus do in whatever situation that we're in, then the world would just be a better place, and we could all just get along. But that question of who is Jesus and the correct answer to that question are foundational to the work of building the church of Christ. And so for us Christians who have been called to build the church of Christ by spreading the gospel here in Chicago and in our various communities, we better make sure that we are clear on the answer to that question of who is Jesus both for the sake of our hearers when we share the gospel, and also for ourselves, for our own salvation. As I said before, I know that all of you would agree with Peter's confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. But yet, while I'm sure that your mouths would always confess that, your heart might not always. Am I calling you hypocrites? No, of course not. I I wouldn't do that. But, well, yes, I am. And I'm calling myself one as well. The fact is that very often in our lives, although we confess one thing with our words, with our mouths, yet our actions and our thoughts do not always correspond to what we say that we believe. You confessed with the Apostle Peter that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. But then, why do you doubt his power and his love to take care of you in the midst of all the uncertainty and difficulty in your life? You confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. But then why do you betray him by giving in to the devil's temptations? by plunging into sin again and again. Well,
Well, Peter must have asked those same questions of himself after episodes of great folly and sin in his life. And others around him who saw him do those things and say those things must also have been asking those same questions about him as well. Next Sunday, in our Gospel reading, which follows immediately after today's Gospel reading, we'll see how Peter follows up on his great victory of this bold confession of Jesus as the Christ with a total faceplant failure by trying to dissuade Jesus from doing his work as the Christ of going to the cross to pay for the sins of the whole world. And in several months in the season of Lent, we'll read again about how Peter denied even knowing Jesus at all, even though he had before confessed faith in Jesus as the Christ and as the very Son of God. And we also know that after Jesus had risen from the dead and ascended into heaven and and had commissioned Peter to be a missionary of the gospel, that the Apostle Paul had to rebuke the Apostle Peter publicly for his sin of denying by his prejudicial actions that Jesus was indeed the Savior of all people, both Jews and Gentiles, apart from works of the law. Now all of these failures, all of these public sins could have easily led Peter into shame and despair and guilt, And for a period of time, they probably did. When the devil and when all other people around Peter were asking, you confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, but then why do you doubt? And if we linger on questions like these, we also might very well be end end up being led by our sins into wandering away from that confession of faith in Jesus as our Savior. We might be led astray into adopting the the happy-feeling ideas about Jesus that are so common in the world around us, that Jesus is just a good role model for our lives, that he was just a wise teacher or a kind humanitarian. But brothers and sisters, do not fall into this trap of the devil. When we see the hypocrisy in our lives, between what we confess with our lips and what we think in our hearts and say and do every day in our lives and in our actions, that is no time for doubting or from wandering away from this confession. Rather, that is time to reaffirm this confession and to proclaim it boldly. That's the time to man up and to confess our sins to God. And so to throw that trap of the devil, the trap of guilt and shame, right back in the devil's face. I admit that I have sinned, that I have doubted the power and the goodness of Jesus. I'm not proud of it. But I do not hope in myself or in my actions. Rather, I hope in Jesus, who is the Christ, the Savior of the world that God promised long ago, the Savior of the world who came and died for me in my place to pay for all of my sins. I hope in Jesus, who is the Son of the living God, who defeated the power of death, and who raises me to new life with him in his resurrection. As we are striving to build the Church of Christ here in Chicago, let's never forget what the truths of Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, really mean for us personally. Because if we do forget those truths, then even though we are laboring for good, we ourselves might be lost. Let's never forget who it is that really builds the church. Yes, we have all been called through faith in Jesus to join in the work of building God's church by sharing the gospel one person at a time. But it is Jesus himself who builds the church. It is God alone who creates faith in a person's heart through his word and through the sacrament. Human reason would 
never identified Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God. He looked so plain and ordinary, and he was put to death in the humblest and and most accursed of ways on a cross. No, this faith can only be revealed and given by God through his word. The church is not built by our work. The church is also not built on people or on a person, as some Christians believe that the church is founded on the Apostle Peter. But rather, Jesus teaches that the church is built on that truth, that confession about himself as the Savior of the world. That is the foundation of the church. And Jesus gave those keys of the kingdom of heaven, the keys of forgiving sins and of not forgiving sins, to all the disciples and to the whole church, not just to the Apostle Peter. Rather, the church is and always has been built on the fact that Jesus is the chosen one of God, the Christ, that he has saved the world from its sins, and that Satan, death, and hell will never be able to overcome the church or to take away faith from the hearts of believers. No matter how hard those spiritual enemies of ours try, because God has given us faith in Jesus as our Savior. And God will keep us strong in that faith through His Word and through the sacrament until finally He takes us to be with Him in His side in heaven, where there will be no more assaults on our faith, but we will rest in perfect peace and security with Him forever. Amen.